A very good evening and welcome to news on Prime TV. A look at the headlines first. The President pleasures all facilities to encourage sportsmen and women. The Ports Authority expands facilities for bunkering or ship full at the Colombo Harbour. Sri Lanka once again beckons foreign tourists. Parliament pays tribute to late Minister P. Chandrasekharan. And on news overseas, the death toll in the Pakistan suicide blast rises to 93. Well, now for the news in detail, the local news first. President Rajapaksha has pledged to encourage all sportsmen and women to do Sri Lanka proud, participating in international events. The President gave a firm assurance that he would extend all facilities possible to improve the sports skills of young rural men and women. He was addressing a special ceremony organized at the Torrington Grounds in Colombo today. The President launched the modernization work of the grounds. It is estimated to cost 312 million rupees. A notable feature was the presentation of awards to sportsmen and women who did Sri Lanka proud through their outstanding skills. Among them were Sanat Jai Surya, Muttai Muralidharan and Susantika Jai Singha. Me, Yuge, Anagatedi, Melate Krida, Pilibandha, Vishesha Salasum Saitava, Idiriyata Geniyama, Saan Krida Kyaage Subhasidya Pabana, Noa, O Krida Vin Samuga Gita, Oge Anagate, O Aege Anagate, Pilibandha Vat, Kattiyutu Kirima Sanda Avasya, Rakshana Vedabilvala, Hama Krida Ke Kirima, Dekki Yutu Ayi, Api Tindu Kalla Kira. Speaking further at this function, the president opined that he will leave no room for the talented springing up from the villagers to go waste. As a person who really loved sports, the president pointed out that he would do his best to facilitate them to improve their skills and bring fame to the country, participating in international competitions. He referred to the decisions taken to develop the sports field and the arrangements made to introduce an insurance scheme for sportsmen and women. <laughs> Ministers Garmini Lokuge and Johnston Fernando also spoke. Several parliamentarians and many sportsmen and women graced the occasion. <laughs> The Port Authority says it has expanded facilities for bunkering or ship fuel at Colombo Port with the addition of another berth for oil tankers that will reduce delays. Colombo Port's new North Pier, which has been developed as a multi-purpose berth, handled its first oil tank on the 30th of last month with a call by the vessel Empty Haven. A new oil pump pipeline system has been built connecting the pier with other facilities for oil transportation. Extra berthing facilities will be provided for the oil tankers reaching Colombo for bunkering purposes with this latest project. The shortage of berths for tankers has been a critical issue the shipping community had been complaining about and had held back the expansion of the ship fuel market. The extra berth will reduce delays in loading and unloading oil tankers and eventually reduce costs. The Ports Authority hopes the new facilities will boost bunkering business at Colombo port and improve foreign exchange earnings. It said it was building two new oil storage tanks at the Colombo Port Oil Bank to boost capacity to improve bunkering facilities at the port. The Paradise Isle of Sri Lanka is once again beckoning foreign tourists with the scourge of tourism now a thing of the past. Post-war tourist arrivals are picking up. Sri Lanka has some excellent spots for tourism which includes beautiful beaches. By now there is an influx of tourists in the Alugama Benthra tourist zone. Most of the hotel rooms are booked. 
more are expected within the next few days. The increase in the arrival of tourists is attributed to the peaceful environment prevailing in the country and the relaxation of advisory warning of travel to Sri Lanka by many countries. While the Sri Lankans were breathing a sigh of relief and celebrating the dawn of a peaceful new year, after a lapse of 30 years, foreign tourists also celebrated the new year on a grand scale in the island. With the revival of the tourism industry, traders have also placed hopes in enhancing their income with the influx of foreign tourists. The tourists claim that a vast change has taken place in this beautiful island within four years. They were highly appreciative of the president's program to develop the country after creating a peaceful environment. Now Sri Lanka don't have problems. Uh, people must come in here. It's a very beautiful beach. It's a very beautiful country. And, and Sri Lanka people, very pleasure, very, very good, and uh, we must uh, respect. President Sri Lanka is good. It's a good man. This, uh, this man make uh, freedom. Freedom. Uh, now it's uh, Sri Lanka. Don't have problems. Uh, people must come in Sri Lanka because uh, don't have problems and uh, not afraid people in Sri Lanka fighting and finish here. Sri Lanka is best. Come. President Rajapaksha pays his last respects to up country people's front leader and minister P. Chandra Sekharan. The remains of Minister Chandra Sekharan was brought to the parliamentary complex this morning. The body was received by the Prime Minister, the Speaker and parliamentarians and then taken to the parliamentary complex. President Rajapaksa paid his last respects at the parliamentary precincts. Many government parliamentarians and other dignitaries were also there to bid their final farewell to their colleague. Only one parliamentarian represented the opposition. After Parliament paid tribute to the Minister, his remains were taken to Thalavakale. The funeral will take place at the Urban Council grounds at Thalavakale on Monday the 4th. Mr. Chandra Sekharan served as Community Development and Social Inequity Minister. He died yesterday after a brief illness. He was 52 years old at the time of his death. While well, watching Prime News and still on the local segment, the historic Cuban Revolution completes 51 years. A commemorative ceremony was held in Colombo. The function was organized by the Bolivian Solidarity Foundation. Delivered in the keynote speech, parliamentarian Vimal Virvansa said, Cuba achieved socio-economic development since succumbing to pressure from American imperialists. He reminisced the many challenges Cuba had to confront at the time such as Sri Lanka was facing today. Mr. Virvansa pointed out that Sri Lanka has embarked upon a people's friendly political operation in South Asia without falling prey to international conspiracies. Cuba's ambassador to Sri Lanka, Nasia Castro Guerra, and Minister Ashala Jagura were among those present. There will be 68 cluster polling booths in the Kilnochi district for the forthcoming presidential election. With a view to facilitating the internally displaced persons who are resettled in Kilinochi, it has been decided to set up 68 cluster polling booths at the Kilinochi Rodrigo playground. This decision was taken up at the Kilinochi GS office when the high officials met to decide about providing the voting facilities to the recently resettled people. Additional Election Commissioner S. Srivardhana, Deputy Commissioner for IDPs S. Shanmugam, Jaffna District Government Agent K. Ganesh, Jaffna Deputy Election Commissioner P. Kuhanathan and many other officials participated in the meeting. These officials also visited Pune in region in the Kinnochi district and decided on the installation of voting centers in that area. As in the total 19 Grama Sevak divisions already, the IDPs have been resettled and it has been decided to facilitate them 
12 voting centers are to be set up in the schools in the region. It has been decided to set up eight voting centers in the Karachi Deputy Government Agents Division. We'll be back with Prime World after a short break.